What's going on guys, Cade is here and for today we are taking a closer look at the top 6 best corrupted dungeons 1v1 builds in Albion Online. So for each and every single build I will explain the playstyle, which ability should you use, how will the weapon work and much more. So if you are tired of losing and want to know which weapon and gear you need to use to be the best of the best then this is the video for you. So with all this said, let's get right into it. Then taking a closer look at the first one which is the one and only normal bow build. So for the weapon you want to go with at least tier 6 bow and as tier 6 unlocks a 4th passive. But besides that for the abilities you want to pick the 3rd Q, then the 1st W and of course the 4th passive. Then for your helmet you want to go with the Hellions hood and pick the 3rd ability and 2nd passive. Then for your chest armor go with the mercenary jacket and pick the 3rd ability and 2nd passive. And lastly for boots go with the assassin shoes and pick the 1st ability and 3rd passive. Then for my choice of capes I went with the Tetford cape and for consumables I chose the roast pork and poison potions. And just before we get into the weapon playstyle, remember that you don't have to use tier 8 gear. So feel free to use any tier 4 or even 4.1 gear, unless I specifically say so. And with that out of the way, let's move over to the build's playstyle. So, to be honest, this is one of the cheapest and best builds you could ever use with zero spec whatsoever. And in the PvP gameplay I was using tier 5.1 gear and I was getting more than 5 wins in a row. So my strategy first of all is before even fighting start to keep on poking and trying to hit your target from a distance. And especially if he is a melee bruiser, so that means a swords player or something similar, you can get 1-3 to three shots on him before even a 1v1 starts. And then when a 1v1 actually happens, what you simply want to do is use the E ability, then W, then Q and lastly activate the D ability. So what you did with this E plus W plus Q plus D spell combo, it basically activated all of your damage abilities and went into an invisible smoke. So like you can see, you can deal massive amount of damage by just activating these abilities and just pressing the auto attacks. Then afterwards you have 3 more abilities. So then I usually like to apply the poison potions on the enemy and when I get to low health I activate my last defensive which is the R ability. And every single time I hit the target I will get a bunch of health back. And last but not the least I'm using the assassin shoes. So just in case if I come across a cursed staff or other builds with a one shot possibility then I switch my boots from run to dodge roll. And this gives me another defensive. So in conclusion this build is very strong and very cheap especially if you use low tier gear. And lastly as we are using the roast pork food so every single damage we do to the enemy we get 9% health back from the damage we deal. If this is something that you've been looking for then try this build out and have fun. Then moving over to the second build on the list which is the fire staff. So for the choice of weapons we go with the one hand fire staff and pick the first Q, first W and third passive. And for the off hand we go with the tome of spells. Then for the helmet you pick the hunter's hood and go with the third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor go with the cleric's robe and pick the third ability and second passive. And lastly for shoes go with the guardian boots and pick the third ability and second passive. Then for my choice of capes, I picked the Tetford cape and for consumables I went with the omelets and poison potions. Then taking a closer look at the build's playstyle. So as a fire mage you are a massive damage dealer and I have seen a bunch of tier 4.1 players killing full 8.3 players. So your game plan using this build should be like any other ranged DPS is to poke the target even before the fight starts. And then when you actually start dealing damage to each other use the F ability and just keep on using your Q's and W's. As this build doesn't require no stacks or anything like that, the spells don't really matter in which order you press them. So you just use Q, W and E as much as you can. But at the same time you have to be careful from the enemy. Because he can use his defensives and as soon as he uses them, which might be a reflect or something similar, you just simply have to stop attacking him. Because with all this damage you may get reflected on and you definitely don't want that to happen. But besides that we still have two defensive spells. So on the other hand when you see a player using his spells use the reflect ability which is the D spell and then as well depending on the situation use the R ability which will block any incoming attack for a few seconds. So in conclusion this is another very strong build which is very beginner friendly and doesn't have any artifacts so you can easily afford it. And as long as you don't forget about the enemy defensives and keep on dealing a lot of damage you should be able to destroy any build that you come across. And now we have come to the third 1v1 build which is the claymore. 
So our weapon of choice is the Claymore, and for the abilities you go with the first Q, fourth W and first passive. Then for the helmet you go with the Mage Cal and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for your chest armor get the Cleric Robe and choose the third ability and first passive. And lastly for shoes go with the Guardian Boots and pick the third ability and second passive. Then for the choice of capes I went with the Tetford Cape and for consumables I picked the Stew and Poison Potions. And then as far as the build's gameplay goes, any sword weapon is built around having 3 stacks. So at the beginning of the fight what you want to do is use the Gigantify ability, aka the F spell, and then use the D ability which will apply a poison effect on your weapon. And then just keep on using your Qs 3 times on the enemy and when you have those 3 stacks use the E ability. And then as for my W ability I usually save it for the player if he runs away or if I catch him on mobs. But if I'm against another similar swords player then I use my W as soon as I can. So it would go on a cooldown and I would be able to use it again. And last but not the least use the R ability whenever you see a big damage is about to hit you. But if you are up against another similar player who doesn't have a one shot spell then before the fight switch your spell to a second option which will give you a frost shield for a much longer period and you will be able to absorb more damage over longer time. And what I found out from a bunch of fights that if you fight against a running player, so that means a frost staff or a bow, you want to change your weapon's ability from the 4th W to the 2nd W and the boost ability from Gigantify to run ability. This really depends on your enemy but trust me the more you will play the build the better you will get and all of this I'm explaining will come to you automatically. Then taking a closer look at the 4th build which is the one and only Frost Staff. So my weapon of choice is the one hand frost and for the abilities you want to pick the 3rd Q, 2nd W and 3rd passive. Then for your helmet get the cleric cal and pick the 3rd ability and 2nd passive. Then for the chest piece go with the scholar's robe and pick the 3rd ability and 2nd passive. And lastly for shoes get the guardian boots and chose the 1st ability and 2nd passive. Then for my cape of choice I pick the Morgana cape and for food I use the omelet and resistance potions. Then as for this build's playstyle it will be more complicated than all the other ones. But I've been playing frost staffs for many years now and this is by far the most fun build I have ever used. So your main strength lies in how many Q abilities you can use. So like in any other ranged DPS player you want to attack the enemy before even the fight starts. But when it does start then at the start activate your E ability which will do damage and at the same time activate your Morgana Cape ability and give you a super fast casting speed. So you want to keep on using Qs on the enemy as much as you can till the Cape ability runs out. And then right after use the R ability which is basically the same thing as the Cape and it will give you super fast casting speed. So when you use E or R those are two kill zone times in which you want to do the most of the damage. And then as for the W ability it is basically a teleport which will stun and deal damage to the player as well. So if the enemy is running I use the W to catch up or if I see a target that I know that won't be running away then I just use the W for extra damage. And then still we have two defensive abilities which is the D ability and resistance potions. So for example if you come across a black hands you know that their whole build is built around attacking with two E abilities. So what I usually do is I use the ice block which is the D ability and then for the second time I use my resistance potions. So in conclusion this frost staff build is very powerful with having super high damage but as well two defensives which completely protect you against any one shot build. The only downside for this build is that it's super expensive because I'm using a Morgana Cape and Taproot. But for sure if you can afford it believe me you will have a lot of fun. And this build will be unkillable if you play it right. Then with that said now we have come to the next build which is the one shot pike. So for the weapon we go with the pike and select the second Q, second W and fourth passive. Then for the helmet I pick the mage cal and go with the third ability and first passive. Then for my chest armor I get the cleric robe and go with the third ability and first passive. And lastly for shoes I go with the royal sandals and pick the third ability and second passive. Then for my choice of capes I pick the demon cape and for consumables I use the stew and poison potions. And then moving over to the playstyle as I said at the beginning this is a one shot build. So if you do all the things right by the time you are done your enemy should be dead without you having to take in return any significant damage whatsoever. So as soon as you see the enemy name tag on your screen use the Q ability 3 times and then activate the W ability. Then use the F ability which will give you a super fast speed. 
and while running towards the enemy activate the ability which will apply a poison effect on your weapon. And lastly when you have reached the target use the E ability and auto attack the enemy once. So all of this 3 Q's plus W plus F plus D plus E and 1 auto attack if it's executed right in just 3 to 4 seconds should delete a player completely. And sometimes if you don't have enough item power the enemy might survive so just use the poison potion to secure the kill. So in conclusion this build is very powerful but if you fail and the enemy gets to use at least one defensive ability before you hit him then you just run back to a safe place and wait for your cooldowns to get back up and try to do it again. For this build item power is everything so spend more money on higher tier but if you actually get used to this weapon and master it you will be able to delete every single build and you won't have any risk to die or even take damage from the enemy whatsoever. And now we have come to the last build which are the black hands. So for the weapon of course we go with the black hands and for the abilities we pick the second Q, fifth W and first passive. Then for my helmet I chose the assassin's hood and went with the third ability and first passive. Then for my chest armor I went with the cleric's robe and picked the third ability and first passive. And lastly for shoes I went with the hellion shoes and picked the third ability and second passive. Then for my choice of capes I went with the tetford cape and for consumables I picked the stew and poison potions. And as far as the gameplay goes this build's playstyle is built all around the weapon's E ability. So first things first, right off from the start, you want to use the F ability, which if you select a target and activate it, it will dash towards the enemy while invisible, and will increase your damage by 35%. So you want to use the F ability and dash towards the enemy, and when you're right on him, use the E ability, and then right after, use the W ability, which is another dash which will deal even more damage. And then right afterwards use the poison potions. When all of this is done or aka the first spell combo is done, use the R ability and then millisecond right after use the D ability. So by doing this you will start channeling your D ability which will decrease the cooldown of your abilities very quickly. So by the time you are done with channeling you should have your second E back up. So just use it on the enemy and eliminate him. So at the start this build may seem very complicated but it's actually very simple. You just attack the enemy with the F plus E plus W and then use the R plus D combo which will give you the time to get your spells back and as soon as you activate the R ability you will become immune to any incoming attacks. So in conclusion this build is very strong and I have seen it getting used by a lot of new or even old players. So if you're looking for a cheap but strong build then here it is. And that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or different 1v1 builds that you would recommend to other players then feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. While you're doing that please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said you have an amazing day and I will catch you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace. Yo, I'm here for